let's talk about what you think is happening here. Why, why do you think that China is still continuing to get loans from the World Bank, even though it clearly doesn't meet the guidelines that have been laid out? Well, one of China's strategies, development goals, is to essentially influence and in some ways take over many of our international institutions. Uh, and I think they've done an incredible job at the World Bank, frankly. What they have done internationally, not just in the U.S., is basically forced people to make a trade and say, if you want access to our markets, which are enormous, uh, you have to play by our rules. And as part of that, uh, that is staying in the World Bank as a member that can draw loans. Uh, to me, it makes no sense whatsoever uh, why the U.S. taxpayer should be backing subsidized, discounted rates to the Chinese government so that they can continue their development model, which is unbelievably oppressive, but also damaging to our economy and our country. How serious do you think the United States is, uh, your, your fellow lawmakers, in terms of pulling back, holding from, or pulling back support for the World Bank if this continues? Well, the one thing that I think is helpful is that we're getting strong leadership from the administration on the China issue specifically, and it has bipartisan support. You're even seeing Chuck Schumer support certain things. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, we introduced our bill a couple weeks ago, uh, and we're just rounding up co-sponsors. I suspect that we'll be able to turn this into a bipartisan initiative. Um, you know, time will tell. Things are, are odd in Congress these days. But, uh, but having said that, I, I am optimistic uh, because I haven't heard much pushback at all. Um, on, on the fundamentals of the bill. And, and frankly, I think the World Bank issue is one that's just not on a lot of people's radar. It came onto my radar as I started researching ways inside of the Financial Services Committee to push back on Chinese influence. And this was the most obvious one and the most glaring hole uh, that we had in our system. And so we went for it. Uh, and I think others will, will jump on board as well. Congressman, I'm glad to hear you say that. I mean, this seems like the sort of bill that Elizabeth Warren and uh, President Trump could agree on. Are you, in your private conversations, optimistic that there will be that uh, bipartisan support? Because without that, it's, it's dead on arrival. Yeah, I am. Now, we did have a, an interesting fight in the committee uh, on the XM Bank uh, with respect to China. And, and I was a little disappointed that some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, weren't more uh, enthusiastic about putting some provisions in, in there. Um, but this is a different issue. Uh, and I think this is a more obvious issue. And so um, by the World Bank's own rules, China was supposed to graduate years ago. There, I think the, the limit is if you're $6,900 in gross national income, China's near 10,000 today. Um, there's no reason why they shouldn't graduate, uh, but they've influenced the World Bank to such a degree uh, from an HR standpoint, but also just uh, politically um, that they haven't graduated. And so I think we need to make sure that they do. Here's what I don't understand. I mean, I mean this seems like such a clear cut case. These are the rules. According to the rules, they shouldn't be getting these loans. How yeah. complicated is it to clear that up? And, and, and for those who are defending this, what, what is their argument? Well, so there's a second provision which says that uh, on top of the gross national income threshold, they have to have developed markets and, and sophisticated markets. And China's saying, hey, wait a minute, our, our markets aren't sophisticated enough. Uh, we can't graduate. Now, I think that's a horrible argument considering the fact that they have two different development banks that compete directly with the World Bank not to mention how developed their economy is. So they pass the, the, the data threshold, the 6,900 mark, but they also pass, in my estimation, on the, the sophistication mark. I think it's, it's laughable that they would try to make that argument, but they have support in the international community inside the World Bank for just that, and I think it's crazy. What, uh, what will it mean if they can no longer get loans? What will, that, well, look, what, I think, what will the impact I think, on China be? So money's fungible, right? And so if, if they can draw discounted rates from the World Bank, that means that they can deploy capital elsewhere. Uh, and so what this would do, I believe, is it would cut off uh, a particular capital source that, is, that they acquire at a discounted rate uh, and force them in some ways to, to play by, by the rules of the international order. In addition, they use their status at the World Bank uh, to influence the WTO. And so I think you'd have fall on effects, not just at the World Bank, but also inside of the WTO uh, to get them again to play by the rules that they've agreed to themselves, which they keep breaking. I want to buy some futures on you. Do you know about this guy? <laughs> yeah, he's a slot receiver. God he's almighty. a congressman. He's a, the smart. O the Ohio State University, number one, Soon, yeah, yeah. all Pac 10. <laughs> yeah. Big Ten, come on, Joe, you're an Ohio big guy. Ten. Yeah, 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 all Big Ten, sorry, all Big Ten, sorry. Yeah, no, I meant Big Ten. I, I was just looking at it, yeah. I am. And, and then you, you went, goes to the Patriots after the Colts. Yeah, what was Belichick like? Yeah. Well, not very nice, because you weren't there very long. But yeah, he, said, was... he said, F this, I'm going to Stanford Business School. Which is yeah. And then you did that. 
Right. So Bill Belichick was the first person I told I was retiring from the NFL. He cut me, uh, brought me in, and, and uh, I actually had a smile on my face. He said, why are you smiling? I said, honestly, coach, I, I'm injured. I need, I'm going to go back to school. He said, where are you going? I said, Stanford State. It's a good school. <laughs>